It has been almost a year since uh, Israel, Cyprus, Greece and Italy signed a memorandum to push forward the East Met pipeline project. Uh, however, there seems to be no progress on this agenda. What is your opinion? What is slowing the realization of this project? First, uh, let me thank you for hosting me at your show. Um, it's a great opportunity now that uh, uh, Minister Prime Minister Netanyahu is in Bulgaria. And uh, I'm sure that both uh, Prime Minister Borisov and uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu are very good in building those uh, bridges that we all need in the area, uh, covering energy, technology, defense, uh, medicine, and, and, all, and everything. Um, so, yes, indeed, um, there are many challenges ahead uh, regarding the infrastructure needed in, in, the, in the area. Um, let me start our discussion with the, with the oxymoron that I observed in the last few years that I have been monitoring the, the energy developments when I was in the States and now in Cyprus. That there, there, is, there has been an increasing enthusiasm by almost uh, all Eastern Mediterranean countries to become you know, an energy hub of the area. You can find many statements from all the leaders uh, promoting um, their individual countries' readiness to play such a role. On the other hand, we see many trilateral or now quadrilateral meetings between the leaders and ministers, followed by statements on alliances, infrastructure like the project where we are speaking right now, time deadlines, and most of the times they neglect lots of realities um, that their policymakers, uh, energy economists, or engineer, engineers later try to, let's say, like reconciliate with numbers. So um, I see a lot of great potential for the region as now we are entering a new era, I would say the era of maturity, because it seems that most of the Eastman countries, and let me clarify that both Bulgaria and Italy, which is the landing uh, country for the East Med pipeline, histor historically are a part of the Eastern Mediterranean. So the countries are understanding now their potential, and through these meetings, they want to be a part of this regional grant strategy. Uh, and uh, furthermore, there is a huge, uh, they understand now that um, if, uh, they are un if they underperform, uh, there is a huge opportunity cost uh, when our region will be compared with other uh, regions with uh, similar energy aspirations. So you mentioned about the, uh, the, the obstacles that, uh, that they still hamper the project realization. Uh, and one of them, uh, for the, the adversaries of the project, they, they come with the high cost, right? Mm -hmm. So um, let me start by saying that there have been many similar undersea projects in the Mediterranean, like the Medgas, for example, connecting Algeria with Spain, uh, and the upcoming uh, Galsi pipeline project that will connect Algeria to Italy through Sardinia. Of course, none of them has the length of East Med pipeline and the cost, of course. But at the same time, none of them has the political importance given to East Med pipeline project. But we have to understand that the, the main driver for any investor to participate in such project is profit. Uh, yes, the project is a priority project. It is included again in the list of the European projects of common interest and it will receive some funding from the European Union. But this is not enough. Uh, this is rather a signaling to potential investors that it enjoys the support, uh, let's say, uh, political or regulatory support from the European Union and the governments of the countries participating. Uh, so to answer, finally, your question, Regardless of how much the engineering advances and the new technologies uh, will reduce the, the cost, uh, the capital expenditure of the project, the main driver of making such a project viable is the landing price of the natural gas in its final destination and how competitive this gas will be versus other routes such as the Russian gas. Uh, and this is translated to how many gas purchasing agreements the project can secure. So 
This is the way the investing companies could make their final investment decision, the fit, so that they earmark the billions needed to construct this uh, project. I don't know if I'm answering your uh, question. Yes, uh, sure you answered it. Uh, but uh, is, in your view, the year 2019 a realistic goal to reach a final investment decision about EastMet? Well, um, 2019 is uh, kind of uh, tricky. Uh, and let's go like with the, with the final destination of, of the project, which is Italy. It is very important here to see what is happening there now. The newly elected government is, is uh, struggling, has enormous pressure because of its budget plan, like in the Brussels resistance, and also because of the rating agencies and the downgrading of the Italian credit funding. So there is a need to highlight uh, the impo Italian importance to, to the European project and gather all the serious leverage they need so that they avoid any similar paths with uh, Greece. Uh, and this is the reason that I suspect that the so much desired project called Trans-Adriatic Pipeline, the TAP, that uh, aims to bring Azeri gas from, uh, from Caspia, from Shakhtenius to Central Europe to, to Italy, which is like seen by Brussels as a cornerstone on, of, of the uh, EU's energy security, was questioned from the new government from day one. We had the environment minister, uh, Sergio Costa, who was uh, nominated by the Cinque Stelle uh, Five Star uh, Party, that uh, raised questions uh, about the project. He, he, he actually called it uh, pointless, uh, given the Italian energy policy and the falling gas demand. And, of course, the Italian, after some um, weeks, uh, the, the Italian Deputy Prime Minister uh, last Monday, uh, uh, he realized and he announced that the pipeline will have to go ahead. Uh, and he excused uh, it uh, with the penalties of 20 billion that, um, that the Italy has to face if not, they pull out right now. Um, another point which is, um, which is answering the, the question on feed is that um, in Italy in, in a number of years, it might be not the most important or a, a good like natural gas market in Europe, like so attractive as it is right now. Uh, Italy pays more on natural gas like, uh, than other destinations as it imports 25% of its needs from its northern borders through a non-European country, Switzerland. Uh, and this is reflected on the prices of, of the Italian energy hub. Um, however, there is a policy that was put forward by the previous government, which I suspect it will be followed from the new government as well, called the liquidity corridor. It's a mechanism that will allow a flow of gas, and they will um, succeed with this plan at 5% discount on the price. This is another measure that will put more pressure on the Italian price, and these things All these factors have to be calculated uh, from the investing companies so that they know, because any project, uh, a titanic project like that, it, it has a lifespan, uh, a very long lifespan. So all these uncertainty factors have to be put in the, in, the, in the equation. And not to mention, you know, the other environmental issues that the top is facing. I think that uh, they have Let's hope that uh, they, they are done with the environmental uh, concerns that they have so that the uh, EastMed pipeline won't have uh, the same. And uh, if I may, like the last um, factor that we have to, to consider is the Russian competition. Uh, the, the project will have uh, to face uh, resistance, uh, I would call it, from the first mover in the European gas market, which is the giant called uh, Gazprom, which uh, it reportedly increased uh, its uh, sales in Turkey and Europe uh, and focused its efforts to maintain its uh, market share and, and keep uh, its existing client relationships, especially in the Western Europe. Uh, you see what is happening now with the Nord Stream 2 project, 
And then the Turk stream, I, I, and I know how sensitive it is for, for uh, Bulgaria, this project. Uh, in any case, it, it increased the production in 2017 by 12% while uh, it offers renegotiation options to its existing contracts in pricing and volumes. Therefore, I think that uh, Gazprom will do whatever it takes to protect its European market share. That's another thing that we have to put in the equation. So if 2019 is the the year of of a feed uh, on ISMED pipeline, let's hope by the end of the year that we will succeed on that. Uh, Because... um, well, there is a great potential now with uh, with new discoveries in the region, and and these discoveries uh, have to find ways to the market. If if we don't uh, plan accordingly, uh, there are fears that uh, these uh, gas finds they might stay in untapped. For Cyprus, is the alternative to export gas to Europe via Egypt? more viable solution than EastMed pipeline and could we count in Bulgaria and Southeastern Europe, could we count on Egypt as a future supplier? Mm-hmm. Well, um, I'm sure that um, um, you know about the, the the pipeline agreement between the, the, the Republic of Cyprus and, and Egypt uh, which uh, was signed uh, recently Um and uh, very recently, the Egyptian Minister of Petroleum, Mr. Amola, stated a- Egypt's readiness uh, to receive gas from the countries in the region, liquefy it, and then send it to Europe in the form of LNG. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and you, you, uh, you can see also the, the, the Israeli gas export deals, that they are also very important. Uh, however... Uh, regardless uh, of the expected ExxonMobil drilling in Block 10 in Cyprus, everybody is, is expecting uh, this uh, drilling to happen in, in the next uh, few uh, months. Um, um, uh, so regardless of this uh, drilling, there is a, in, in Egypt, the, the Italian Eni and, and the Egyptian Tharva company uh, are expecting to finish uh, the first exploratory well in Northfield in uh, northern Sinai uh, before the end of, the, of December. And there are like, uh, significant hopes of, of achieving another great discovery in the Egyptian ex- economic exclusive zone. So can you imagine the level of, of the utilization rate of the two terminals, Damietta and Kru? Um they would start thinking on running on full capacity when, when a couple of uh, years ago they, they just remain idle, empty. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that Egypt is moving uh, in a very fast pace and it has all uh, the reasons to do so after the discovery of Zor, which is like a 30 TCF uh, uh, finding. And I expect that many other um, uh, discoveries will come online in the in the next period. Uh, so I think that um, uh, uh, Bulgarians' um, uh, potential is is is, is great. Uh, if you consider the, the FSRU unit in Alexandrovolis and the interconnection between Greece and Bulgaria, uh, I think that. Um, if we connect it with the with the with the vast, the vast uh, amounts of gas discovered in the in the in the Levantine and the Eastern Mediterranean, I think that um, there is a great potential for the for the for the local LNG to arrive to Europe through uh, through the Balkans. Mr. Papaloukas, thank you very much for this interview.